Today's show is brought to you by 3D2U.org. 3D2U.org. We are all in this together. They want to make the gift that makes you happy. And also by Henderson's Hearth. Classic Celtic cooking for today's modern on-the-go schedule. Check them out at hendersonshearth.com and visit them at the Louisiana Renaissance Festival weekends through December 13th. And now, let's do the show. Hello, my friends, and welcome. Welcome back to Shakespeare's Coffee Break. I am your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare, and I am on my coffee break. Let's have a nice, noisy slurp right now. That's just good internet audio. I don't care who you are. Ah, what a day this has been. I got to hang out with eighth graders virtually um, because, you know, I I'm not I'm not going anywhere. Um, hang out with them virtually in their classroom. Uh, through Google Meeting, and it was my very first time using Google Meeting, but it was an amazing and wonderful experience. They wrote sonnets with me, and they were working on their own poetry, so I feel like that's a thing we should get going here on this show, like Sonnet Thursdays or something. So let me know what you think, and uh, maybe we'll make that happen. But today's guest, ah, oh, he is a composer. He is a hammer dulcimer player. He is a super genius, a world traveler, friend of the show, and also a personal friend of mine. Also, I, I think we might be able to call him a, uh, a solterista, if I remember that word correctly. Uh, but let us bring him in now, the one, the only, the inimitable, Mr. Vince Conaway! <sighs> Muppet arms! Oh, that was a very good Caesar look there. Like, hello, hello. <laughs> I am loving that ascot. You are really working some ascots lately, sir. I so I was intending to do this early in the year, and then everything shut down, and I haven't been able to, you know, go anywhere. And so uh, I decided after what six months, seven months of uh, of not being able to wear the interesting clothes out, I'm like, no, I'm I'm just gonna wear the interesting clothes. Oh yeah, that is that is something I have been doing uh, quite a lot actually. Uh, I uh, have been wearing um, Starfleet jackets, and uh, <laughs> um, someone gifted early birthday gifted me um, a Jedi tunic, and it's oh. comfy. So I just wear it <laughs> around the house. <laughs> so it's just like it's loungewear for me now. So I'm like, now I'm wearing this. I wore uh, a velvet sports coat. Uh, the other day, uh, because I wanted to uh, feel fancy. <laughs> so. What's the occasion? The post office. <laughs> a little bit. And then when I get back from the post office, because now my adventures to the post office are usually at least 20 minutes long of time there and there's other people and all that, I come back, I immediately go into the basement disrobe, put my clothes into the washer, the ones that can be uh, machine washed and others just hang up and let them uh, stay for three to five days. Right. Uh, go get a shower, come back, and sometimes put on something else equally fancy. I went uh, to the post office um, wearing just like really nice natty clothes and I came back and I'm like, I'm gonna put on a three piece suit. <laughs> and I only wore it for an hour because I had to get into costume. <laughs> Different three-piece suit. You've got a waistcoat on, right? Uh, well, oh, yeah. It's oh, it's a doublet, but since I wear it under this, it's it's effectively a waistcoat now. It's an under doublet. Uh, but very uh, late 16th century look. I uh, I tend to sport here, uh, and then uh, because I've added the scarf, it's effectively um, it's effectively an ascot that I wear all the time now. Uh, but it's partly just simply because I'm cold, and this room is very cold. It does not. Uh, get heated well by the uh, furnace system in this house. <laughs> uh, yes, you poor New Englander. I, I'm not even in New England. I'm in New York. <laughs> We're in the Catskills, and it's like I, oh, it's I'm cold. When New York is New England, so uh, my apologies, yeah. to any New Yorkers who are watching. Oh no, yeah, I mean they're upset. Me, it's just like no, I'm not in New England. I'm, I'm next door. But because I'm not a native of New York, so I, I don't care that much. <laughs> I'm, I just like to be geographically accurate. <laughs> Accuracy is what counts. But I, I am digging. I am digging all of your looks that you've been putting on. I mean, from this look right here to uh, your 
your uh, James Dean motorcycle aficionado uh, casual that you had with the sporty cap and the leather coat. And I think I have that same leather coat, <laughs> by the way. So it was, you know, I picked it up in a shopping mall 16 years ago. You know, mm -hmm. it's one of those that I had a friend ask me uh, a year or two ago, said, so did you buy that jacket pre-aged or have you worn it? And I'm like, it's not in that bad shape. What do you mean? <laughs> no, it looks uh, it looks very good, actually. So uh, what, uh, what, what was your answer? It was like, this is a Wilson's leather classic. <laughs> that's that's exactly what it was. I was uh, doing the Michigan Renaissance Festival in 2004, and uh, Michigan caught me by surprise because Michigan will do that. And uh, yeah. I was left without a coat. And I said, you know what? I'm going to splurge. I'm going to get something I like, and it's beautifully put together, and it has handled 16 years as my primary autumn winter coat. And I am shocked it's in as good a condition as it is. Well, um, a, a good leather jacket will uh, will do that. I mean, it'll hold up. A good leather jacket, a good pea coat. My one pea coat is 12 years old, I have. And, I mean, it looks it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's been rolled around in the dirt. Uh, but, you know, it holds up and the pockets are all ripped. And, like, it, it's doing that thing where, like, the inside is, like, sagging now. So you can see it on the outside a little bit. And I'm just like, yeah, what? What's that about? But My it's comfy. I like it. Red bear right along the inside seam on the bottom where it rubs against the belt loops of my jeans. Uh, that's that's not fun there. Uh, that happens so often, by the way, with corduroy pants, I've noticed. Corduroy, get like, where they go. Yeah. Half the fun. I mean, and then, like, they stop making the. You're like, oh, what's going on? Oh, oh I'm rubbing them clean. And then yeah. you run and suddenly you're falling out of your pants. Yes, yes. And I, so uh, it's one of those things of I can rarely wear corduroy pants anymore because I have soccer. Uh, that's for you Americans. I have football player thighs. So, so as uh, our mutual friend uh, and colleague John Williams likes to say, my knees don't touch. <laughs> yeah, I have to go through yogic contortions in order to get them to uh, go together. But you, sir, you uh, have had... Uh, I would I want to say a really good second half of 2020, just seeing everything that you've been working on. And now you're down at the Louisiana Festival. And I, I've no, I've seen portraits of you ro having roped yourself off, created your own stage space, so to speak. Well, as and, a performer, that's what you do. You know, any place that you play becomes a stage. It's just in these times, I've made it a little more formal. Well, I, I, uh, I think that is fantastic because and that also works if you... Um, uh, you know, just not even a, at the lanes at a festival, but let's say in a city park or something where people know where, even outside of the COVID times, people now know where they're allowed to walk and where they're not allowed to walk. <laughs> and if you go under the rope, you're just a bit of a dick. <laughs> yeah. But I, I like it. You uh, and your masks have musical notes on them and they're just beautiful things. And it looks like you, I mean, this is purely me just, presupposing and and putting onto you the inferences are having the time of your life down there welcome to social media <laughs> well done cheers i'll it's drink all that. illusion none of this is real none of this is happening <laughs> i mean much of it is real that, that there's a core of honesty there's a core of truth you can't get away with making a complete fabrication uh, but as with anything in the social media age, everything is also curated. And so when I'm having a bad day, when I'm feeling anxious, when I'm feeling depressed, when I'm having a depressive episode, they generally last three days. And you'll notice I get very quiet on social media. Mm -hmm. um, so it, at that point, you have to infer by what you're not seeing rather than actually being shown uh, what you're seeing. That is not to say that what I'm showing online is a lie. It is just a very carefully angled window into life and i don't think there's anything wrong with it i mean like we're showing you behind the window and people always say oh you only see the best of people on social media it's like no you often see the worst up to including people telling you in my opinion often way more than you want to know and just like oh hey uh i uh, am having an absolutely uh crap day and i would appreciate gifts of cats and it's like all right well here's a gift of a cat 
but yeah. and I hope you're having a better day. But originally, um, going back into the the very before times when Facebook was new and MySpace was still a going concern and Zango was out there, people usually only talked about the best things. Like, oh, I'm listening to this album, or I had the most amazing lunch, or whatever. And Instagram still seems to be that, but uh, Facebook itself is just your running diary that you're presenting to the world for many people. And it's and curating it, I think, is frankly, I think to an extent it's healthy because not to say that we should be ashamed of our darker parts, but and I, for one, am not ashamed of most of my darker parts, but I also just don't feel the need to tell everyone about them. I there broadcast is, everything else about myself. And Facebook, social media in general, but especially Facebook, is difficult. So I try and display vulnerability. I try and let Facebook know that I do uh, struggle with anxiety, that I do struggle with depression. However, when I'm actually in an anxiety attack or a depressive episode, social media has two reactions. And one is I'm going to be really helpful in a way that is not frequently helpful no, or the impulse is oh someone else has it much worse whether it's you know oh i have it worse or my friend has it worse and i'm like it's not a competition in misery and because of that it's very difficult in my opinion to show vulnerability online i still make an attempt at it but that's why i use the word curated is because everything i show on social media is deliberate it's not necessarily flattering it's not necessarily positive but it is always a choice I think that is one of the best ways uh, to do it. Uh, make the active choice to not not just have it to be the thing you do, but have it be an active choice. I think that is a, be a beautiful and fantastic way of looking at it. And I look at you as someone who has made beautiful and, dare I say, helpful active choices with your social media because as you just uh, allu alluded to a moment ago, uh, you have been dealing with depression and you go through three day bouts and whatnot. And I think it's really helpful for people to know that, um, that uh, people they look up to, but also just even if they don't know you and someone happens to stumble across a post or something gets shared, that there's other people out there and that they are not alone. And I think that is a beautiful thing to be able to do. But again, on your terms, not just because it's the thing you do and then later you're like, oh, why'd I post that? I mean, right. make that act of choice. I think it's a really good idea. Curate it. Curate your stuff, people. Ah, oh, goodness. So speaking of curation, uh, last time you were on, we played uh, some pieces of yours from Italy. And uh, today you have, uh, I think you said two um, pieces you are going to uh, be playing for us on your Hammer Dulcimer Live. And I just get so excited by this. Um, so what will your first one be? So my first one is going to be a piece from the 1520s. It is uh, a piece written by the composer Vincenzo Capirola. And I don't love him just because his name is Vincenzo, but it's on the list. <laughs> And so this piece has a really fascinating, interesting backstory. So a lot of music in the 16th century that has survived to come down to us survives because the authors had them printed. And so you would print off 500 copies, 1,000 copies, and sell them. This is the dawn of the printing press age, the dawn of the age of the printing press. And so you end up with a lot of these books around. And so statistically, with you have 1,000 in a print run, one or two of them have survived. However, it's not a guarantee. The, uh, the trick is, is we have a number of music books from this time period where we have mention of them, but we don't have any surviving repertoire. And we have other books that the books themselves didn't survive, but someone just scribbled down a couple pieces in their personal notebook. Uh, they borrowed the book from a friend, for example, scribbled some uh, pieces in their notebook in a manuscript copy, and that manuscript comes to us. And so there are a number of pieces and even full composers who we only know from various people's notebooks. Now, this composer did something that is neither of those. What his apprentice did was took all of Vincenzo Capirola's repertoire, put a manuscript pop copy, bound it together as a book, and then hired an illuminator to paint marginalia and to paint uh, each piece and turn it into a beautiful work of art. So even if the music was no longer seen 
as worthy. If the music would no longer be played, the book itself would survive because it was too pretty to toss. That's fantastic. Oh my gosh. They illuminated a manuscript of music. Ah. And this is a very late time period for illumination. Illumination, of course, we associate with the Middle Ages. And by the 16th century, it's still around. It's not a dead art, but it is certainly not what it had been a century prior. And uh, the fact that this is a very late period illumination also makes it of interest uh, to historians for other reasons. But it is the reason this book survives is because it's just too beautiful not to. Oh, uh, well, let us have something from that. I mean, a combination of the arts all in one piece. So Vince Conway playing the work of Vincenzo. What was his last Caparola. name again? Caparola. Caparola. So one Vincenzo playing another. Guys, gals, and non-binary gingerbread pals. May I present to you my friend, Vince Conway. Tune is called Stavessi Amor Dormendo Sotto Un Faggio, and you were love sleeping under a beech tree. Oh, bravo. Ah, oh, I wish these works were longer. I mean, just uh, sit back and relax. Ah, that is beautiful. The piece I chose because it's not very long. It, uh, it's been one of my projects in isolation and in quarantine to work on music that I felt would fill a gap in my show, in my lane show and in my stage show. And the trick with some of the longer pieces is they become a little cumbersome. And a smaller piece, I can just keep tossing in repeats as I like, so I can make it longer or shorter to fit the segment that I have available. Oh, fantastic. Brilliant. Well, Ozer, I have a piece that I recorded. I recorded in January, released it in September. And uh, it's another piece by the same composer. It's a little longer from the same source book. But I noticed that I was having trouble in some of my shows because it was just a smidge too long. Okay. And so one of my projects, as I said, I've been finding from a number of my favorite composers and some of my favorite sources, music that was a little shorter, music that would fit a little more conveniently in various points in my show, rather than needing more of a dedicated segment, which some of the longer, more complicated pieces do require. That is uh, fantastic. Well, we're going to have more music in just a few moments. I'm going to need to pay some bills here for a moment. So Vince has time to refresh and uh, take a swig and whatnot. And uh, we'll be back in just uh, about three minutes or so with Vince Conway as I go off and uh, pay some bills. So friends, I just uh, want to remind everyone that Shakespeare's Coffee Break is made possible by you, but also by uh, some wonderful sponsors, such as the good people at Hill Storage and Rigging Company. Hill Storage and Rigging Company located in Middletown, Pennsylvania. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from knowing your equipment is in skilled and experienced hands with services from the machine movers and erectors in Middletown, PA. Established in 1967, Hill Storage and Rigging Company is a family owned and operated full service mill, right? Serving industries in the mid Atlantic states and beyond. Hours of operation are Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time and weekends by appointment only. They're a women-owned small business. Call them at 717-944-7676 and visit them at hillrigging.com. Hill Storage and Rigging Company, no job too large or too small. And Ren Pops, get your favorite Renaissance Festival performers in pop form. I mean, like seriously, 
What are you waiting for? You want a Ren Pop, like your own uh, Shakespeare to take home with you. You can get a Palo Gabonto, a Brune, a uh, goodness gracious, Music the Gathering, the Acrobatrics, the Washing Wheel Wenches, Aaron, Bonk, Lynx, Kim the Sword Swallower, and more are coming out all the time. So go to renpops.com, follow them on Instagram at omg underscore renpops, and get your own mini Shakespeare. Yes, go do the thing. And, of course, we are brought to you today by Henderson's Hearth. Henderson's Hearth, classic Celtic cooking for today's on-the-go schedule. They are located at the Louisiana Renaissance Festival and strive to provide healthy, easy, and delicious products steeped in Scottish heritage. Their ingredients are grown by them or sourced locally in the Louisiana region to ensure quality. Each product is made in small batches so they can ensure that your mixes are going to exceed your expectations. And all of their soups are vegetarian based. Three of their four soups are actually vegan, which means throw in whatever mixes you like and you don't have to worry about the dairy if, like me, you're allergic to dairy. Shop at hendersonshearth.com, follow them on Instagram at hendersonshearth and visit them at the Louisiana Renaissance Festival weekends through uh, December 13th. Tell them that Shakespeare sent you. Go do it, do the thing. And we are brought to you, a couple more to go, by the Daily Brew Journal a 365 day guided journal. Now, have you ever started a personal journal only to give up because you didn't know what to write about? I have. And have you ever wanted to keep a journal but didn't know what, how to start or where to start? Well, the Daily Brew journal might be just the thing for you. The authors have painstakingly created a 365 day template for writing about your thoughts and feelings, as well as a nice mix of active hands-on exercises to keep it interesting and to help you avoid journal fatigue. Every purchase of the Daily Brew journal will actually help give a free copy of the book to a college student seeking counseling. The writers of the book are all clinical mental health counselors. This is what they do. And you can get it anywhere. Target, Bons and Noble, um, eBay Books. Uh, that one didn't work as well. Um, Amazon, nay. <laughs> Go and do the thing. Find a comfy chair, grab your favorite hot beverage, a good pen, and start journaling. And 3D2U.org, one of our newest sponsors, 3D2U.org, uh, wants to help you create the perfect gift. We are in this together. That's their tagline. It's because they make custom products for you, for people, for other people that are gifts, or even just for you to have it for yourself. If you wanted to make a product, if you want to make a gift, they want to work with you to make the perfect gift to bring people happiness. Go to 3D2U.org, follow them on Facebook and on Instagram. And finally, the Renaissance Stream Guide. The Renaissance Stream Guide is your TV guide of Renaissance Festival live streams featuring live music, play readings, comedy, belly dance, fitness classes, art streams, demos. There's over 50 live streaming events on the calendar every week. So you have plenty to choose from. And that's how some of you have actually come over to me. And I thank them for that. And I thank you for following them. I want you to go like them right now at facebook.com slash renaissance stream guide. Facebook.com slash renaissance stream guide. I have a thing right here for you. If I if I could actually act professionally. No, no, no. It's here somewhere. Is it? Is it? Yes! Found it. Found it. This is why I need a tech to be doing this and I can just talk. And that would be amazing. But Renaissance Stream Guide, go find them. Facebook.com slash Renaissance Stream Guide. They are wonderful. They will change your life because they're going to introduce you to entertainers and vendors and festivals that you heretofore have not uh, met, have not been able to meet. Um, that's one of the benefits of this weird quarantine because we're being introduced to people from around the country while we are safe at home working to bring down the levels and uh, help out our first line, frontline workers. So Renaissance Stream Guide on Facebook. Follow them. They're amazing. And if you would like to uh, become a sponsor of Shakespeare's Coffee Break and Shakespeare's Shameless Self-Promotion Happy Hour, send me an email. Email me, shakespeare at shakespeareapproves.com. We'll talk great. And also, while you're doing all that, just go give the show a like. Go like Shakespeare's Coffee Break itself on Facebook, facebook.com slash Shakespeare's Coffee Break. And go like me. It's the only way I judge my self-worth, by having lots of social media likes. At facebook.com slash shakespeareapproves. Shakes approves on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, do all the things. Go like my friends, the Zenith players. We share a lot of resources. You see a lot of their shows on Saturdays right here on my channel, facebook.com slash Zenith players. And since we're in the season of giving right now, go to zenithplayers.com and kick, kick? I have no idea what's happening. 
and click on the highly attractive donation button. Thank you to them. Thank you to you. Thank you to all my sponsors. And let's, uh, as we're thanking people, thank my guest, Vince Conway, for sticking around and standing there with only a vaguely bemused expression on his face. <laughs> That's my Roman pose again. This is this. Your is, Roman pose. You no, know, before hello. I was going for the queen, this time was more. <laughs> Yes, I'm just like, hello, hello. Just don't go Mussolini on me. And that's all I ask. <laughs> I mean, uh, what's his name? Bungo Bungo. He's he's bad enough, but... Uh. Boney, oh, bless his heart. Uh, what a character. He just wants to be loved My by everybody. Who's Berlusconi with one of the great Renaissance architects, Brunelleschi. Mm. They're very different. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. One one of them one of them is a great uh, architect and artist, and the other one just wants all of your money, a lot of corruption, and to be loved by everybody. And he means that. <laughs> oh goodness gracious. But Vince Conaway, satirista, I love that word. I was looking up a definition of it earlier today because I forgot. But I saw your satirista.com. I'm like, oh, what does that mean? And uh, it just took me to your page, but in Italian. Uh, so um, what does satirista mean? Because when I look it up, it just gives me, um, it gives me psalterist or psalmist. So does this mean you are directly and intimately connected with the psalms of the Bible? So that's interesting because that is one of the possible uh, derivations of the word salterio. Uh, which comes from a Latin salterium, which comes from the same root that brings you the word psalm. And uh, because of that, it's a really interesting experiment in translation where the, the Latin salterium became salterio, uh, meaning hammer dulcimer in both Spanish and in Italian, and the player of a salterio in both Spanish and Italian is therefore a salterista. Uh, some English speakers prefer dulcimists. Uh, I don't love that word. No, it's it's awkward and and so, uh, overly German. <laughs> so yeah, I uh, I really like the fact that uh, especially since I do perform in both Italian and Spanish, uh, salterista gives me just a little frisson of joy. Oh yes, and it gives you a a uh, a soupçon of a je ne sais quoi <laughs> and other phrases that should not be combined together, but I do it anyway because it makes me giggle. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Now, uh, um, what uh, what is your second piece that is neither too long nor too short, but just right through your experimentation and uh, that you have found? So this is a piece that I uh, this came. This is a piece on my most recent album. It is my favorite original piece on that album, and I call it Pistoia. The uh, the theme for the latest album. Uh, the title is Delitalia, music from Italy, and. The original music on that album is music that I wrote during my travels in Italy. And normally when I'm writing music, I give it a, a working title. I'll give a new piece, a working title based on where I wrote it. So for example, you know, if I write something at the Louisiana Renaissance Festival, I'll call it Louisiana, or I'll call it Hammond, or I'll call it Albright, which is the name of the village in which the, uh, the festival is set. But in this case, because I had written these tunes in Italy and the album had an Italian theme, I kept the working title, which was just the name of the city where I had written the original concept. And so this is Pistoia, because I wrote it in the city of Pistoia, which is about 20 minutes by train from Florence. And nobody goes there because it's about 20 minutes from Florence. But it is a beautiful, lovely, uh, late medieval city with very, very warm uh, citizens who have been very generous audiences to me and who like to come up and go, why are you here? Florence is right there. And I'm like, that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. And if you know what to listen for, you can tell that I was listening to a lot of symphonic metal when I originally wrote this song. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Oh, fantastic. Oh, well done, sir. Well done. Ah, now, uh, Sally Eldridge uh, had a question for you. She said, there's not many who play the glass harmonica. Obviously, you're not playing the glass harmonica right now. But she wants to know, is that also true with the hammer dulcimer of not that many people playing it? So the trick is, is it's a cultural variation. You find hammer dulcimers in folk traditions all over the world. And so within those folk traditions, it's a fairly common instrument. But outside of those folk traditions, it is nearly unknown. So, for example, it is the national instrument of Hungary in mm. the form of And it's a very common instrument in the rest of Eastern Europe, in Romania, uh, in Russia, in Belarus, in Lithuania. You find it in the uh, in mountainous regions almost always because hammer dulcimers are more portable than the piano which historically replaced it so you find it a lot in german folk music of bavaria on the border of austria germany and switzerland again in the mountains it's a very common instrument in uh, parts of asia in the himalayan regions of india uh, it's still played in Iran, where it was likely invented a thousand years ago, although the proof on that is really sketchy. It's still played in central Mexico, again, in the high elevated areas. And in North America, it's fairly common in Tennessee bluegrass music. So if you're around Knoxville, Tennessee to Asheville, North Carolina, and then another area of northern Arkansas, southern Missouri, and the Ozarks, if you're in the Smokies or the Ozarks, you've probably seen a dulcimer. If you are outside of those areas, you likely have not. That is fantastic. I had no idea it was used in bluegrass. Ah. There was only specific regional variation. So if you're around, uh, there's a band of the Upper South, like I said. So basically, Branson, Missouri, Berea, Kentucky, and Asheville, North Carolina are three bright spots in, uh, where you can find dulcimers for sale in dedicated dulcimer stores in the downtown uh, court. Oh, that's brilliant. I love it. Ah, wonderful. Oh my goodness, Vince, you are a walking history uh, lesson at all times. I feel like you need to do your own uh, weekly stream or podcast or something, because you could just play a tune, and it doesn't have to be long, just a 15-minute show. Just play a tune, give some history, talk about train travel. <laughs> and then... That's what I do on Patreon. So ah! very much along the lines of my videos that I post weekly on Patreon. Oh, well then, in that case, that is an excellent segue for you to give a shameless plug to yourself as we talk about people becoming a patronista. That doesn't quite work. But becoming a Patreon uh, of Vince Conway. Talk about it for a sec. <laughs> All right. So Patreon has been a fantastic change for me. I have to admit that I never expected to be so dependent on it. But when the world shut down, Patreon was the one bright light that kept me going. Uh, musically and professionally. And I started it four years ago because as a musician, compact disc sales have been declining for 10 years. And I was just trying to boost my income back up to replace the, the CD sales I lost. And then of course, I lost all my shows. And Patreon has been remarkably resilient and helpful in weathering this uh, economic storm. And I am very, very grateful to all my patrons. Like I said, I post weekly content, which tend to be videos talking about my exploits, talking about the history of the music, history of the instrument, and the various assorted bits that go along with it. One of my favorite parts of playing a strange musical instrument is the fact that I get to do the homework and talk about it. I am... Um, a geek, in case you couldn't tell. And <laughs> one of the things that really draws me to do what I do. That is absolutely brilliant and fantastic. And uh, as someone with my own Patreon, we've just passed 50 members over there, and that's amazing. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. And 
you, you people really keep us going. And uh, it's a little bit of a return to uh, the archaic medieval, late medieval, early Renaissance period where there would be patrons that would have you at the great houses uh, for the artists. And so it's a bit of a return to that. And I thank you for that. I know Vince does. And, oh, Vince, I need to talk to you. I have an idea. Uh, I want to talk off... Uh, off, off of the recording. <laughs> so stick around uh, when we're done with the show here. Uh, because uh, in, in case you don't like it, I, I don't want to like say, you should do this. And you're like, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, I would just say, that's a great idea. <laughs> and then people are like, oh, cool, we're going to do that. And then it doesn't <laughs> materialize. But thank you oh. so very Thank you so very much, Vince Conway, Salterista. Uh, for joining us here today. You can follow him all, in all the places, namely VinceConaway.com. That'll get you to all of his other stuff. But also, uh, tip your salt Teresa on Venmo. Venmo, Vince Conaway. And I like how it, yeah, the, the A is big. So it's Conaway. Well, there's <laughs> Vince Conaway who was getting some of my tips. So I had to... to... Oh, well, there we go. Um, and then also, become, of course, become his patron on patreon.com slash Vince Conaway and uh, PayPal Vince Conaway. Go do all the things. Follow him on Instagram. He's a great follower. You're just going to freaking love it. Um, and friends, that is uh, Shakespeare's Coffee Break for today. Uh, a big thanks again to all of our sponsors, also including, of course, Dandy Folk, Dandy Folk Bits and Bobbles, for the shop and snazzy, you can go to dandyfolk.etsy.com to explore their ever-expanding uh, collection of accessories, including reversible venture hoods, scarves, masks, and more. They've got you covered for the season suit. What I did there. But uh, their 3D masks are machine washable, hand washable, uh, with um, adjustable stainless steel nose bridges, comfortable woven elastic, and extra coverings to go higher up over your um, nose, and under the chin to keep you safe uh, as you go about to the post office, which takes way too much uh, time nowadays. But hey, it's worth it because you get cool stuff and it's the holiday season and you don't know what you're going to get. And hopefully you do know what you're giving unless it's gift cards. And then, you know, that's nice, but you know, put some heart and thought into it. But use my special code DEATH by Fluffy Kittens to save $5 off of your order of $50 or more. Dandy Folk, bits and bubbles for the shop and snazzy. And I hope you join me on Tuesday for my birthday show. I am turning 40. I know, it's crazy. I know. You thought I was there about 10 years ago. But the great thing of losing your hair this early is you look 40 for forever. And that's, and that's cool. Yeah. So I'm going to look 40 for at least another 10 years. I'm pulling on a Patrick Stewart on you, people. Doing a Patrick Stew. Sir Pat Stew. And you'll be like, hasn't he been middle-aged for like 40 years now. It's like, yes, he has. Yes, he has. So join me for my 40th birthday party right here on the show. It's going to be part of uh, Fraulein Elsa's Hallmark uh, Christmas movie corner, and we're just going to have a silly good time. So join me for that. Uh, of course, the Hamlet Christmas special is coming up in two weeks from today, Wednesday, December 16th, with the Social Distancing Players, based off of my Renaissance Festival show of the Hamlet Christmas special. Will Hamlet discover the true meaning of Festivus? Find out. The Indiegogo campaign for that will be going up tomorrow to pay our actors, and you can get a part in the show. $50 gets you a role in the show. Um, we perform it over Zoom, broadcast it to YouTube and Facebook. So check that out. New Year's Eve, Shakespeare's New Year's Shaken Eve. I'm featuring my friends Chase Treasure, Lady Prudence, the court composer, Andrew McKee, the Irish Bard, the Langers Bard, Drunken Disorderly, Shelley Buttons, and Paolo Garbanzo as himself on New Year's Eve. That's going to be a great big fun Zoom party. We want you to wear your most elaborate Renaissance Festival garb, your fanciest New Year's clothing, or your coziest jammies. The show starts about 9.30 in the evening Eastern time and goes until 1 a.m. We're going to have a great time. Lots of performances, door prizes, hanging out with all of you. We want you to come. Tickets are $30, but are on sale right now for $5 off using code CYBER. So... Go uh, get that. You can get that um, um, here on the Facebook page or go over to my website, shakespeareproves.com, to get your tickets. Nat 21 Adventures, we're going into our final three episodes of Campaign 4, Season 4. Uh, it's our live Dungeons and Dragons show that we do every Tuesday night at facebook.com slash nat21adventures and twitch.tv slash palo garbanzo. 
uh, because when a natural 20 just won't do, you need a nat 21. You can catch up on all the previous seasons at nat21adventures.com. Get some really cool merch. And Shakespeare's Coffee Break, what we're doing right now, it's our daily show where we discuss all that's best in life over coffee. Tomorrow's episode is either going to be Susan Chikosh of The Rambling um, Sailors, or it's going to be me doing something by myself, maybe writing sonnets with you. I'm just like, hey, let's write some sonnets. And uh, we'll do a how-to, and it'll be fun and weird good time. Um, and that um, is going to become a recurring theme on Thursdays. Uh, it might start tomorrow. It might wait until next Thursday. I don't know. Do you? We're going to have to wait to see Susan's availability. Um, of course, Fraulein Elsa's Hallmark Christmas Movie Corner every Tuesday. And... On Fridays, Shakespeare Reviews, the movie review show I do with Andrew McKee, the Irish bard over at Life's Affair. New episodes drop about 9.30 in the morning Eastern time on Life's Affair's uh, Facebook and YouTube pages. And then on my Facebook page, Shakespeare Approves, we do a live watch party at 3.05 in the afternoon. I forget what we're doing this week. So it's going to be an adventure for all of us. When we turn it on, be like, oh, that's the show this week. Neat. And then at 5.35 on Friday, uh, Shakespeare's Shameless Self-Promotion Happy Hour. This week, we're featuring Body Party and the release of their new single. I do hope you're going to join me. It's going to be a lot of fun. We will raise a glass, get a little bit schnuckered, and have a great time. But friends, that uh, just about does it for me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the show half as much as I've enjoyed performing it. And that means if you did, then I enjoyed it twice as much as you do, and that's called math. And whatever you feel the show is worth, a one, a five, a ten, for a fifty, I will have Vince Conway come and sing songs to you while playing the hammer dulcimer because he is able to sing and play the hammer dulcimer at the same time, which is so difficult. He did not know it was difficult when he started playing it and thus just did it. And now people are like, wow, you can do that. And he's like, yeah, I can't have everybody. And he can hold an entire conversation with you while playing a song because he is a super genius. This is Vince Conway giggling at the things I'm saying about him now, <laughs> but we'll do that throw money into my cup. And by cup, I mean buy me a cup of coffee. Coffee.com slash Shakespeare. That's ko-fi.com slash Shakespeare. And for $20, I'll write you a sonnet. And if you want to support me every month, go to patreon.com and become a Patreon of the Arts. That's patreon.com slash Shakespeare. I have tiers from $3 to $30. And right now, all of my tiers are actually getting the same rewards because money is tight for so many of us. And I want all of you to be able to enjoy my particular whimsy. So go to patreon.com slash Shakespeare and support me. Go to patreon.com slash Vince Conaway and support him as well. Throw money into his tip jars on Venmo and PayPal because he has been entertaining us here for 40 minutes a day. But friends, that's about it from me. I love you. You love me. Mutual glorious affection. I will see you soon. On behalf of Vince Conway, I will stand like a Roman. And also wave like the queen. <laughs> he's he's waving like a Roman queen. Oh my God, he is Roman royalty. <laughs> well, thank you. Oh. I love you. <laughs> I love you. You love me. Mutual glorious affection. Bye-bye, friends.